I'm going to create some sine waves of different frequencies, all the way from the, the bottom of the accepted range of human hearing at 20 hertz to the top, which we normally take to be 20 kilohertz. And it's going to test three things. It's going to test your loudspeakers. Can your loudspeakers reproduce this full range of frequencies? It's going to test your hearing. Can you hear this full range of frequencies? And I'm going to say that your high frequency response will diminish as you get older. And the third thing it's going to test is YouTube. I'm going to record this at 192 kilohertz sampling rate. So I've got plenty of headroom in that respect. And when I bounce it to a finished video, I'm going to bounce the audio in wave format at that same sampler rate and of course 24 bit resolution. So that's what I'm going to submit to YouTube. So when we listen to it on YouTube, who knows what we're going to hear, but it should be interesting. So this is Pro Tools, but you should be able to do this kind of uh, test in any digital audio workstation software, as long as you have a signal generator plugin. So I'll start by making a track and I'm going to call it Sine Wave. Let's make it a bit bigger than that. And I'll need my signal generator plugin, which is just here, signal generator. Okay, let's put that there. So I'll start off by making an audio segment. So that's a, a blank segment or clip of audio, if you prefer. And I can enter 20 hertz in my signal generator. So we've got a sine wave, 20 hertz, minus 20 dB. I'm making it minus 20 dB because some of these frequencies can be rather painful to listen to if they're too loud. And also, I don't want to blow anybody's speakers. But keep your fingers on your monitor level control, just in case, and I'm making it your responsibility to take care of that. So 20 hertz, render, and we can listen to it. Did you hear anything? Well, it's probable that your loudspeakers don't go as low as 20 hertz, so it's not surprising if you don't hear anything. Um, but we'll try 30 hertz. We'll go up in quite small steps while we're, while we're at the extreme low end of the frequency response. <laughs> there you go, Pro Tools, you can't even play 30 hertz. There we go. It's probably because I've got the uh, screen recording software running as well. 40 hertz. Okay, I can just hear that. If you can't hear it, then what you can do is you can touch the cone of your woofer just really, really gently, and you should be able to feel it vibrating. So 50 hertz. Render. Okay, I can definitely hear that now. 60 hertz. Yep, are you getting it yet? Answers in the comments, 70 hertz. Okay, I'm going to go up to 100 hertz and then I'll start going in larger steps. Oh, sorry, I should, should have been 80 hertz, 80 hertz. And the next one will be 90. And 100, and you should be getting it by now. Okay, so I'm going to speed up a bit. And we'll make the next one 200 hertz. Nice. And 500 hertz. Okay. And one kilohertz. So one kilohertz is um, what we normally regard as being the center of the audio band. It's like the middle C of audio. I mean, not literally the middle C, but where a piano has middle C, which is approximately in the center of the keyboard, 1000 hertz is approximately in the center of the audio range. Okay, oops, sorry. And next one I'll do is 2000 hertz. Okay. 
You see, this is why I kept the level down because it would start getting painful to listen to if it was too high in level. 5,000 hertz. So you should be able to hear this. It's a high frequency, but you should be able to hear it. Okay. And now I'm going to start going up in 1,000 hertz increments. I can hear that just fine. So at some point, what you'll probably find is that you can't hear it anymore. Uh, but you'll be able to see on this meter over here um, that it's active. 7,000 hertz, as you, can, as you can see there. Eight thousand. Nine thousand. I can hear that, but it's getting a little bit on the faint side, I would say. Let's try ten thousand. Yep, I'm still getting that. Are you still getting it? Eleven. It's getting to the point now where, for me, I can hear there's something there, but I'm not really hearing it as a tone. And it's probably something to do with my very advanced age that's causing that. And again, I can tell there's something there, but I wouldn't really honestly be able to say that I can hear it. 13,000. 14,000. Fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand used to be the uh, limit of FM radio, if I remember correctly. Well, it probably still is the limit of FM radio. So when they designed that, they must have thought that fifteen thousand would be good enough. Sixteen thousand. And I'm not getting anything at all now. But it is still there, as we can see on this meter. Another three to go. 18,000. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Got a bit of a twitchy finger on the play button. 19. And finally, 20,000 is as high as this uh, signal generator will go. So if you can hear that, you're doing very well indeed. But as I said, it's not just your hearing, it's your playback device, and it's also YouTube. What does YouTube do to it? So I won't know until I upload the video and listen back to it, and I'll be hearing the same thing as you. Either it's going to play back all these frequencies perfectly, which I hope it does, or it's going to mangle the audio in some way, and we won't get all of those levels coming out. So what I'm going to do now, just to finish off, is I'm going to play all the way through these frequencies, and I'd love to hear your comments and just see what you think about your hearing, about the loudspeakers, and about YouTube. So let me go back to the beginning of that. There we go. And I'll play it all the way through. And just before I play it through, I'm going to take some time to label all of these segments so you can easily see which frequency is playing. Thanks to the magic of video editing software, you don't have to watch me do that. Here we go.
And there we have it, the full range of audio frequencies. So this is recorded at 192 kilohertz. And when I bounce this to a video, I'm going to keep the WAV file at 192 kilohertz. So it's got to be the same audio that I've created in Pro Tools. And I'm going to upload that to YouTube. So we'll see what happens. As I said before, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm David Meller, Course Director of Audio Masterclass. Thank you for listening.